Welcome to the VB Toolbox. This is an update video to my six-year-old uh, SQL Server series. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to answer a question that I've been getting a lot. Uh, so I was like, eh, I'll make another tutorial now that I have the ability to upload videos again, which is kind of nice. A little more reliable internet. <clears throat> Um, so the question that I've been getting a lot is with the SQL control class that we've created in this series um, starting with this video from a long time ago um, connecting and querying a Microsoft SQL Server the question is can we use stored procedures with this SQL control class that we created and the answer is yes and it's actually quite simple um, and it's also recommended. I think that most uh, commercial applications do not embed their SQL queries directly in the application like we have uh, throughout this series. Um, I was trying to keep this as simple as possible and um, you know mainly just teach you how to use it. So I'll show I'll just walk you through uh, utilizing stored procedures, which is actually highly recommended. So, um, it, <clears throat> I think in my last video of this series, part four, um, in the description, I have the, a link to the project source code. So we have the entire project. I, you may have been following along up to this point just by video already and probably already have all this, but if you don't, you just want to um, play around with it. <clears throat> you can download this project file. So I will just save that out to my desktop. Um, pretty easy. Looks like I already had a copy there. So I can go out there. I'm going to go ahead and delete this old one. So you can just follow along if you want major complaint of a lot of people is that I waste a lot of time I'm slow so <laughs> hey it's been it's been six years so uh, yeah give me a little slack <laughs> I'm very rusty and have done almost no coding in that time so bear with me I'm gonna go ahead and open up the solution in there <clears throat> while that's loading um, I should just point out that if you don't have the database up to this point or you just want to refresh there is a backup of the database that we used in the series um, you can just restore that to your SQL Server I'm not going to go through all of the steps on that I'm, I'm assuming that you have some knowledge of SQL Server and how to how to restore that but that will give you this uh, tutorial database And it just has a few sample tables that um, we'd played with or were thinking about playing with in the past. One for users. Um, I think there was like an inventory one in here too. So anyway, back on track, back on track. Now that the project is open, um, here's our SQL control class. It's very simple, uh, very basic. And the first thing that we'll need to do, <clears throat> as this was created many years ago on another computer, and obviously my computer is not your computer, so we have to get our, in our connection string, we have to get the path to our SQL Server and the instance of that uh, database. And we also have to verify that we're using the correct username and password. So what I have done here is I have a new server and I have a user a SQL server user called tutorials and the password is just password on there so um, we'll use those credentials to update that connection string also extremely important um, you have to supply your server and instance of the server for the connection string so I'm just gonna take this copy my server and instance over to my connection string 
control and just paste it in there. And also this tutorial user is in my server, it's tutorials. You can use whatever you have established as your administrative user in there. Um, <clears throat> and the password, I think, is just password. So that will use the credentials for that account that I showed you to connect to this database. And the SQL tutorial database name is the same, so I don't need to change that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, test my connection by starting the application. All right, it looks like we started up. So uh, inventory, let's just test this. So <clears throat> it looks like it pulled the inventory correctly from the database. Um, I think that in a, in a prior tutorial or whenever I set up this source code for this, I was going to show how to deal with, um, you know, query errors or something like that, or just capturing errors on your query. So I think this is actually an intentional thing. So it happened when I launched the inventory screen. I'm going to just um, do a tiny bit of troubleshooting on that to correct that code. Uh, I'm assuming it's in here. Username is correct. There it is right there. So a uh, little query correction. It's funny that so long ago I actually remember adding that in there. <clears throat> no more errors when I run it. Okay. So we're good to go. Now back on track. Stored procedures. Can we use that with our current SQL control class? And the answer simply is yes. And the way that we would do that is, is literally the same way that we would call it from here um, if we wanted to execute a stored procedure. Sorry, my computer's slow. Um, I think I already had one created in here. And this might not be in the actual restored copy, so you may have to create the procedure yourself. But I have a stored procedure built for <clears throat> inserting a user, a new user, into um, our table. And I believe that is the members table. So what I want to do is call this stored procedure from my application and add a new user. <clears throat> so to do this, um, let's go into our new users form. It looks like we have, we're have we capturing four fields, whether they're active, admin, username, and password. Very basic. And <clears throat> this insert user query, we're passing um, the username, the password, the active flag, and the admin flag as parameters into our SQL control class. But we sh really should not be using, um, you know, this insert code. We shouldn't have that hard coded into our application. We should be calling the stored procedure. And then if we ever need to update our queries, it's easier to do it on the SQL side without having to redeploy our application. <clears throat> so to do this is really simple. Um, we use exec for execute and then we use our stored procedure name. And our stored procedure name is just add member. Now you can call, yeah, you, know, you can call the the whole namespace of the database like SQL tutorial DBO, and then <clears throat> add member. I'm gonna see if this will work with just DBO add member. 
And then we need to supply our parameters. And as you saw, our parameter order is user, pass, is active, is admin. So we have to tell them what the username is, the password, whether they're an active account, um, and if they're an admin. And it looks like, you know, because we already have these set, we're just going to pass these parameters that we've set in the correct order into our stored procedure. So user, comma, at pass, comma, at active, comma, I don't think the space is necessary, but, and admin. So we're passing those values from our main form uh, into our database. So let's test it. Let's try inserting a new user. Oh, I left that true flag on there. It, that's <clears throat> That true flag is just um, built into the SQL control class because other people were asking, how do I return the identity of the last um, record that was inserted? And that's what this little optional uh, parameter is for that sub. So um, I'm just gonna leave it on for now so I can just quickly show you. Let's go to add a new user. password is one two three four five super secure passwords um, I'm gonna make them an admin and I'm going to save record number 19 was added to the database user was created successfully so there were no errors executing that stored procedure so that's really all there is to it I think I had actually tested this once before. <laughs> so uh, Dragon might have been added twice, but let, oh, sorry. Getting getting ahead of myself. Um, I should be able to see my list of users here. And I have two Dragon Lords. One's uh, ID 18. One, and the new one that we just added is going to be uh, 19. Apparently we're not pulling those correctly. So what I'll do is I'll delete... Dragon Lord. Because both of those had the ID of eighteen, it deleted both records. <clears throat> The last identity was 20. Yeah, you can you can uh, definitely manage that better. That's it. So you'll notice um, we did a delete, and the delete code has uh, is not set up with a stored procedure. So if we went to our user deletion form. We're still using these embedded queries um, and commands. Delete members where uh, username is user. So <clears throat> the reason we had um, both of those dragon lords, we, we deleted it by the username instead of by the ID because I had 18 and 19 and the ID wasn't showing up properly either. So these are little, just little things that you can uh, troubleshoot. Like this should logically uh, delete the user based upon their ID and not their username. So if you end up with two users with the same username, it doesn't uh, destroy both of them. Anyway, I guess that kind of answers the question. Can you use stored procedures? Yes. And I recommend turning this into a stored procedure as well. So <clears throat> have, you know, a base member member management stored procedure. You could put all, all of the 
information you want into one stored procedure, you know, combine your deletion and then have if statements in your SQL to, <clears throat> you know, select which method you want to use. Or you can just separate them out. You could just, you know, keep it clean and um, have like user management underscore add member, user management underscore delete member. Um, that's really up to you and how you design your database, but pretty simple. Um, I didn't want to actually go into creating the stored procedures. I'm assuming the people asking these questions uh, already know how to create those, but that's it in a nutshell. So thank you for joining me. Um, I hope this was helpful and, you know, as a demonstration that yes, you can use stored procedures and it's also recommended um, in your application when interfacing with uh, SQL Server. So I will catch you all later. Thanks for joining me. Bye bye.